Hello, this is John from TC Math Academy. And the question is, do you remember your fifth grade math skills? Now, maybe you're watching this video and in fact you are in fifth grade, that's awesome. But uh, probably the most of you out there that are watching this video, you've already uh, successfully completed elementary school. Maybe you're beyond middle school. Maybe you're beyond high school. Maybe you're in college. Maybe you're in your 60s or 70s. Whatever the case, welcome to this video. But here I have a basic math question. And we have three numbers here, 4, 5, and 7. What I'd like you to do is to find the LCM. Okay, And I'm not even going to tell you what the LCM is is at least not yet because i want to give you a full opportunity for you to figure this out by the way feel free to use a calculator but if you know how to determine the lcm given these three numbers go ahead and put your answer into the comment section i'm going to show you the correct answer in just one second then we're going to uh, review what is the lcm and how to find it and this is really critical in terms of arithmetic, you know, basic math, fractions, and beyond. This is absolutely a math concept and skill you will need to know. But uh, anyways, before we get started, just want to let you know that if you need math help with the course you're taking, test prep, or homeschooling, make sure to check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, don't forget to like and subscribe as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so let's go take a look at the answer. LCM, we wanna find the LCM given four, five, and seven. What is the answer? Well, the answer is 140. All right, so LCM, what does this stand for? Well, we're talking about the least common multiple. All right, now if you got this right, and if you even uh, if you used a calculator, that's perfectly fine. But if you're able to do this, that is fantastic. Matter of fact, you definitely earned a nice little happy face, an A plus, a 100%, and a few stars so you can tell your friends and family, yes, indeed, you still have your fifth grade math skills. All right, so what is the LCM? Well, I'm going to explain this uh, more fully in a second, but I do want to give you a little more of a practical example of why you need to know how to find the LCM. Okay, so let's suppose I have two fractions here. Let's say 7 over 30, and I want to add it to this fraction 1 over, oh, I don't know, let's say 64. Okay, so can we add these fractions the way they are, right? Well, the answer is no, because the denominators here, these bottom numbers, are not the same. All right, obviously 30 and 64 are not the same. In other words, if I had two fractions like 2 fifth plus 1 fifth, I can add these because the denominators are the same. So it's simply we just write the denominator, 5, then add the numerators. 2 plus 1 is 3, and we are done. But here we have a situation where we do not have what we call common denominators. So we have to find what we call the lowest common denominator. So uh, most of you out there are familiar with this idea. Now, whether you can actually do it is a whole other question, but it's not that difficult. What we have to do is to effectively find the LCM of the denominators. Okay, whatever these numbers are, we're going to find the lowest common multiple, and that, by definition, will be the LCD when you have fractions involved. Okay, so we're really talking about how do you find the LCD if you want to kind of think of uh, this problem in that manner. Of course, we don't have any fractions uh, here, but the uh, same uh, procedure applies. All right, so let's get into the actual uh, problem. And we can't really solve the problem until we understand what is the LCM. Now, I just said it was the least common multiple, and that's perfectly fine. So some of you are out there saying, that's great, Mr. YouTube Math Man, but what is a multiple? Okay, I don't know what that means. Well, you do know what that means. You just forgot. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at a super easy example. And let's take a look at two numbers here, two and three. And let's look at multiples of two and three. Okay, so again, what is a multiple? Well, a multiple of a number is simply we're going to take that number and just multiply it by various numbers, and we'll start with 1. So 2 times 1 is what? Well, that's 2. So what would be the next multiple of 2? Well, 2 times 2, right? So 2 times 2 is 4. 2 times 3 is 6. 2 times 4 is 8. 2 times 5 is 10. 
and so forth. We could just go on forever and ever and ever uh, looking at multiples of two. All right, so that's all uh, multiple is. Now let's take a look at multiples of three. So this would be three times one is three, three times two is six, three times three is nine, three times four is 12, and on and on and on. So obviously you need to know your times table and hopefully you, you don't need a calculator with this basic multiplication, but these are multiples. This, this is an example of multiples of uh, numbers, okay? So now that we have these two numbers, two and three, let's just kind of, let's uh, kind of look through the list of multiples and see what multiples they may have in common. Now, they're gonna have a ton of multiples in common. We're not gonna write out the entire list of these multiples because it goes on to infinity. But if you just kind of look here, we can say, oh, wow, they have tw uh, 12 in common. So that's pretty cool. So they're like, oh, we got some 12s. They both share 12 as a multiple. But what is the least common multiple? Well, we have to kind of scan the list. We're like, oh, look, they both have a six. So six is even lower than 12. So six is the lowest common multiple or the least common multiple, right? These multiples are in common and it's the least multiple they have in common. So if the question here was find the LCM of two and three, the answer would be six. All right, so uh, hopefully, you know, this answers the question on what is the LCM and how you can actually find the lowest common multiple. So if that's you know the case, all we have to do is kind of write out a list of numbers. Well, let's go to our actual prom here. Uh, we have four, five, and seven, and write out the multiples of each of these respective numbers. Now, this is going to be uh, some uh, good amount of work, right? So four times one, let's look at the multiples of four, is four, four times two, eight, four times three is 12, on and on and on and on and on. We are gonna go for a long time, and yeah, not, you know, let's say indefinitely long, obviously, but you're gonna have to do, you have to write out quite a bit of multiples until we can determine uh, what is the lowest common multiple. Because we write all these multiples out, even though some of these multiples, like say 20 here, okay, between four and five, uh, they share, you know, this multiple, but there's 20 is not in seven. Right, so we're like, oh well, you know, you're trying to look for a set of multiples, more, you know, the, a multiple uh, where each of these numbers have in common. It's not good enough for just two of the three. We have to find all three. So that means we're going to have to write out our list pretty, pretty long here until we uh, uh, find out that 140 is the multiple that works. It's the lowest common multiple, the least common multiple. So to get to 140 you're gonna to have to write out quite a bit of multiples, especially with four, right, to get there. And so this is a decent amount of work. However, if you did it this way, that's perfectly fine, uh, but I'm gonna show you a much, much easier way to do this. But just in review, you can uh, determine the LCM by simply write out the multiples. You just don't know how, how many multiples you have to write out in order to find that LCM. All right, let's take a look at an easier way to do this, and this is the preferred way. So what we want to do is factor each of the numbers here. Okay, so we want to find the LCM of 4, 5, and 7. And what we want to do is prime factor each of these numbers. So let's take a look at 4. All right, well, 4 we can uh, factor in a simple factor tree. And that is 2 times 2. 2 is a prime number. So 2 and 2 are prime. So we can express 4 as a, uh, the product of these prime factors, 2 times 2. And we want to write this as a square. Okay, so 4 is equal to 2 times 2. Now, of course, 1 is always a factor of any number. So 5, well, we can only factor as 5 times 1. That's by definition a prime number. So it's already fully factored. So the uh, prime factors of five is simply five and the prime factors of seven, same thing as uh, seven. So the definition of the lowest common multiple, at least kind of like a mathematical standpoint, is the following. This is the way we can find it. So what we wanna do is uh, find all the prime factors of the numbers in consideration, right? So what are those numbers? Four, five, and seven. 
and we want to look at all the prime factors of these numbers, okay? And we're going to create a product. In other words, we're going to take the prime factors of each of these numbers across the, uh, the board, and we're going to multiply all the prime factors together. So what are prime factors? Which ones do we have here? Well, let's start this way. We have a 7, so we're going to need a 7 in this product that we're going to form, and we're going to multiply it by any other unique prime factor we have, which, of course, we have 5. And then here we have 2, and specifically 2 squared, okay? So we have to put that in as well. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that this is a very simple problem, and there's a reason I'm writing this as a power. You're going to want to follow up and watch some, um, if you want more help on this, uh, watch some more uh, uh, my YouTube videos on the LCM and the LCD. But if you really, really want like a full kind of instruction on basic math, arithmetic, I'm going to strongly suggest you check out my Math Foundations course. Okay, it's a little mini course that'll give you kind of the full instruction, complete review. It's great for those of you that are kind of looking to get back into math. You can't really get into things like algebra until you review and strengthen all your arithmetic basic math skills, okay? So again, that's yeah, called my Math Foundations course, but I do have additional videos on my YouTube channel that can give you more challenging problems like this, uh, more challenging problems where I speak about the importance of why we need to express this as powers. But let's just continue on with this problem. So 2, or in specifically 2 squared, okay, is the other uh, prime factor that we need. So 2 squared times 5 times 7, 5 times 7 is 35, 2 squared is uh, 4, so 35 times 4 is 140, okay? Now, of course, it took me, you know, time to explain this, but if you knew what you were doing, you could just prime factor this real quick, be like, okay, this is uh, uh, 7 times 5, that's, um, this is going to be 35, this is already uh, 2 squared, that's 4, and you could just do this 1, 2, 3, instead of having to write out all these numbers. It reminds me way back when I got in trouble as a young yellow elementary student. And this is like in the 1970s. And back in those days, uh, one, they would take away your recess, which was like a terrible thing. And then I remember um, one of my teachers saying, here's the dictionary and just start writing uh, from this, you know, letter on. And I would sit there during recess and just, you know, you'd have to write, you know, mean <laughs> my fellow students who got in trouble and we would have to copy the dictionary. And it was just like, it kind of reminds me of just the tedious work that you would have to do if you had to write out all these multiples. Now, I don't even know if you could do this anymore, but uh, here's the thing, right? We don't want to write out the entire dictionary. We don't want to like you get carpal tunnel syndrome by doing all this long stuff. It's important that you understand, obviously, what's going on here. But just because you can do a simple basic problem, you know, looking at the multiples, you really need to understand uh, how to use prime factors and the definitions of things like that. Okay, so with that being said, I just want to stress to you, okay, never feel bad that you know, you, um, you know, forgot a math skill that you once learned, right? You're, you know, our brains, we don't just learn things and just retain stuff. It's impossible, right? We're going to have to go back and review and never feel like, you know, basic math is, you know, beneath you. Like, ah, you know, that's just basic stuff. I should already, you know, always, uh, you know, um, be able to do that basic stuff because young people do that. I should know how to do that. Listen, for, we all need to go back and review skills that we once had. All right, just like riding a bike, you do a little bit, uh, you know, of this stuff again, it'll kind of all come back to you. All right, so with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.